Buenas tardes a todas las personas que nos acompañan hoy en la presentación de nuestro Good informe. Good to everyone who's present here for the official presentation to commemorate the fifth anniversary of the implementation of the final peace agreement in Colombia. My name is Asher Kaufman. I'm the director of Kroc Institute, and it's a pleasure for me to greet you all. Okay, uh, for decades now, the Kroc Institute is working in Colombia to build peace. Together with Pastoral Social, we work with monitoring activities of the implementation of the final agreement between the Colombian government and the former FARC guerrilla members. We feel very thankful for the trust of our given to our work as monitors, independent monitoring activities. And I hope that the information and opportunities that have been highlighted will be useful for all of you that are hearing us today. Thank you very much for your time and the best. Muy buenas tardes. Okay, so good afternoon to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josevina Echavarria. I'm the director of the Peace Agreement Matrix of Croc Institute. Thank you very much for being here with us today. For whoever needs translation, please to English, please go to the bottom icon that says interpretation and select your language. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome again to this event of the special report of Kroc Institute that commemorates five years of the implementation of the final agreement in Colombia between the government and the former guerrillas FARC EP. So the Kroc Institute is acting as a monitoring activity for the implementation process. That means that as a witness of the process to be able to start the agreement offering information and technical support that helps towards the decision-making process of the implementing agencies and also to maximize the process towards the benefit of all of the citizens. So five years ago, they told us to have the monitoring activity of the final agreement. And today with the same honesty and dedication, we put on the table this report that is a special report that emphasizes on the milestones that have been reached, the barriers and challenges that have been found along the road, and also the different opportunities that should be prioritized to catalyze the implementation and to strengthen the process in regard to peace building. So we hope that this report, this special report will become in a very strategic input for the planning activity and for the execution of the implementation for the following five years. So we give thanks again, especially to all of the team at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, and also for the Barometer Initiative in Colombia for the technical work carried out and relationship that has been possible, this new um, initiative. I have today with me, it's the Elita Research and Mateo Gomez, technical leader of research as well, both members de la matriz, de of de our paz. team of the matrix of peace agreements of the University of Notre Dame. Our event today will have two different segments. The first segment will be the introduction of the special report that will have a conversation form between the three of us, Elise, Mateo, and Josefina. And it will take about 40 minutes. The second segment uh, will have 20 minutes to answer the QA session and also the questions that have been sent beforehand. And also you can use the chat or the question or the QA uh, icon that you have here at the platform in Zoom and we will be answering the question. So let's start uh, uh, right away. So Elise, please let us know According to the research activity carried out, which are the levels of the implementation of the peace agreement in Colombia after five years of the signature? Thank you very much, Josefina. Sorry, I would like to share my screen with you all. So the rest of the conversation would be more like a dialogue, but we wanted to start at least with some graphs to share with you all to show you in a visual manner what has been happening in regards to the implementation. So as you can see here in this graph, from December the 1st of 2016 towards October of 2021, 30% of the 578 provisions that are being monitoring by the Barometro Initiative have achieved to be completed. 
So also besides this, 18% of the commitments have reached an intermediate level of the implementation. And 37% of the commitments are right now in a minimum state and 15% of those provisions have not started yet. So it's quite interesting to see that the implementation at global level, why? Because this shows the trend from the beginning of the implementation towards uh, the current year. You can see the change in the trend starting in 2018 when we changed of, uh, from the implementation towards a commitment on the short term towards commitment on the medium and long term. But besides of seeing and checking this information at the level of the whole agreement, it's quite important also to see the information at the level of the different bullets of the agreement, because we see a clear difference between the implementation of the different bullets or points of the agreement. So in this graph, we can see here the implementation per points of the agreement. And here we see three different groups or three different behaviors that are quite different regarding the implementation. So first of all, on the points three and six, we can see much of the implementation that has been completed, 49% and 58% as well, respectively. So this is because on the cases of point three and point six, there are many commitments on the short term in regards to the end of the conflict, the creation of the implementation per se of the agreement and so on. Even though always in point three, we have some other commitments that are pending in regards to security that we will be talking about later on. So number two would be that we can see a behavior uh, of the implementation more or less on time on points four, in regards to the solution to the problem of uh, drugs, illicit drugs, and in regards to the agreement about victims of the conflict. So in this points, for sure, there are some things that have not been implemented. There are some delays, but in general terms, we see here because the amount of commitments and uh, intermediate status or complete status, we hope that they uh, will be finished on the time given. So the third, would be that we can see a behavior quite different on points one in regards to the rural integral reform and in point two that has to do with political participation. In those two cases, we see then uh, higher of commitments in uh, non-initiated status or minimum status. That means, well, two things here. On one hand, we have many commitments on the long term that could be not started yet because we expect to have more implementation until 2031. But in other cases, there's a delay or things that have not yet been implemented and we won't wait, uh, we won't see the implementation completed in the time given. And finally here and very quickly, we can show you here uh, the monitoring activity of the differential uh, focus or transversal focus of the agreement, especially the one that have to do with the implementation of the gender focus and the ethical focus. In both focus, we have been seeing some progress. Yes, and we'll be talking about this later on in regard to the big milestones of the implementation uh, later on, but it's quite important to see here that there's a delay or a difference better between the general implementation that has 30% of implementation that has been completed and Meanwhile, the gender scope only has 12% of the complete implementation and the ethnical focus only 13%. So this is just a summary of the implementation at quantitative level. And from this, we can have so many qualitative conclusions as well that for sure we'll be talking about later on. Okay, thank you very much, Elise. As you are saying, let's continue now talking more about the challenges and the barriers that we have encountered. And right now we'd like to ask then to Mateo, because if we can check those milestones and you can tell us please, what has been achieved during this first five years of implementation? Okay, Josefina, good afternoon for you and for everyone who's present here in this event. And well, we'd like before starting uh, to share some key messages about those 
implementation and share about the investigation exercise that we carried out from Barometro Initiative, because we think that at the end, the fifth year of the implementation is not only showing a milestone, and it's a very important time where the balance is part of the activity carried out in regards to commemoration and celebration, of course, of the sign signature of the peace agreement, but also of our role as monitors. It's an opportunity for sure, uh, quite uh, beneficial for this exercise. And with the team of researchers that are in charge of each of the points of the agreement and differential focus, we decided to so to have this balance first, identifying which are those capabilities, which are those infrastructures in regard to rules, institutional standards that were installed during these years of the implementation of the agreement to be able to recognize as well what has been done, what has been the progress, and starting from here to start a prospective analysis that we'll be sharing later on of where is precisely or where are precisely the main opportunities, challenges. And at the end, the different uh, opportunities to be able to increase the levels of the implementation that are making part of the objectives that we have as Barometro Initiative. So, well, what I'm going to be sharing right now and starting more of what was being said before by Elise a few minutes ago related with the status of the implementation is that each of those points of the agreement during these five years achieved to make some progress and some objectives to achieve to have the implementation making it possible, to make the implementation of the agreement making it feasible and viable in a panorama that has been uh, stated. In regards to point one of the final agreement related to the rural reform, integral rural reform, we identify concretely five milestones of the implementation that we think would be possible to be completed in the rural uh, integral reform starting with the three axes of access and formalization of land titles all the programs of rural development with territorial focus and the national plans of the rural integral reform and we think as well very specifically that these five milestones or this progress made and this uh positive results of this five years of the implementation are concentrated first on ruling the procedure for the access and formalization of land titled first with the decree 909 and development of the standards that he, this decree bill has that conforms precisely the main aspect to start this process. And in the same manner, even though the challenges, barriers identified and so on, the design, the pilot of the implementation of the catastrophic information is another aspect that it's quite important to uh, see that during this five years has been implemented that we think it's a very important milestone of the implementation, of course, to be able to offer guidelines for the creation of uh, development with a territorial focus with a rule, let's say very rigorous of those procedures, but especially the exercise, the participative exercise that was supported later on by the design of the development programs with the subscription of transformation territorial programs where we were able to collect 30,000 initiatives after those participative processes where we have the different views of the different farmers, of the different um, indigenous communities, of different African communities of the country, of those territories that were affected by the conflict and where we do see this uh, work towards alternative towards peace building and also the adoption of some of the national plans of the rural integral reform where we were able to close the report uh, of 10 of those 16 plans that were adopted through some legal instrument during the past few weeks we included one more the one that has to do with rural education and to start this process to create this main instrument in regard to planning activities focus on the territories to achieve conditions of life for the rural citizens of Colombia at the end for sure are showing a milestone and something that we were able to show in our report presented during May of year 2021, which was the inclusion on the, the territorial development plans of many of those initiatives, cadets that were identified were more than 11,000 cadets initiatives that were included on behalf of the new mayors and governors and now that we are monitoring to identify precisely how they have been developed through the incorporation of the budget, through their execution, and so on. So in regards to the participation in the political activities at the point two of their final agreement, two milestones. One, very recently, the creation 
constitutional legal creation of the constitutional circumscription of peace. And this one's uh, the seat special positions for victims within the Congress of the Republic in regards to repair the victims on the political manner, but also to take their voices to a space, let's call it, to work with political decisions for the building of peace in the country, such as the Congress of the Republic. In year 2018, also, we were able to show us a very important milestone of the implementation, the approval of the provision of bylaws, but not only the approval, but also its implementation. From 2008, we have seen that the Congress of the Republic has been adopting precisely the rules of procedures to achieve that the political opposition that participates uh, in this representative instance can exert roles at the different boards, directed boards of the different uh, corporations or of the chamber, lower chamber that is part of the Congress of the Republic or also the differential scope uh, regards to gender is playing a quite important role. And this is a fact, and it's because of the implementation of the agreement and it has a very important repercussion and the implementation of the agreement. And finally, also the recomposition and reactivation of the National Council of Peace and Reconstruction Coexistence and its expression, territorial, territorial expression. This is an instrument that has some type of background, even beyond the implementation of this peace agreement in Colombia, but because of the implementation, we have seen this reactivated and it's growing in regards to the participation. In regards to point three about the end of the conflict, for sure, uh, that's what's being said before. We have many provisions associated to this process in regards to re surrendering weapons and stop fight and fire, which was verified by the special mission of the Security Council of UN that had at that time the mission of verifying this process of stop using weapons and which was done showing its success and precisely this is the first uh, result of the peace agreement. And, and later on, we have Many other activities in regards to political reincorporation, social incorporation, social reincorporation, the approval of Project 100 uh, for former combatants that's having this as a milestone that 70% uh, of reincorporation process are having productive projects, individual or collective. And this is something that it's a symptom or sustainability for peace. And also for sure, the creation of the political party called Communes, its participation within the Congress of the Republic, it's a very important step towards implementation. In regards to point four about the solutions of illicit drugs, we think that to create this national program in regards to replacement of crops, illegal crops with the challenges, barriers, difficulties of its implementation, it's at the end, the fact that it's uh, confirmed normally, normatively, uh, Decree 822 of year 2017. It's quite important. It's a norm uh, that it's the base that gives responsibilities within the Colombian government for its implementation and its creation. It's a milestone, let's say, that really to highlight within the implementation of this five years. Of course, I insist, even though the virus, but it has a very important number, which is that 98% of families that were having this problem that signed commitments with pennies are being kept in this uh, loyalty to the commitments that were signed in regards to the replacement of those illegal crops and also the prevalence, they'd say, I, we identified in this exercise, the decision that was taken by the Constitutional Court in year 2019 to interpret the Constitution of Colombia in regards to the commitments of the peace agreement and to give prevalence to the volunteer uh, substitution of illegal crops versus the uh, forced um, replacement of crops, that this was the interpretation in a scenario of tutela, which is the one that determines that this is quite important for the implementation of the policy of the Colombian government. And finally, within this strategy, with the internal adoption of policy for the uh, con attention of consumption of psychoactive uh, substances, and also together with the adoption of uh, mental health in regards to the prevention, in regards to the intervention to a phenomenon, uh, social phenomenon, public health that is within this uh, situation in regards to peace. Point five of the agreement in regards to, to victims of the armed conflict, we think there are three main or four better main milestones 
that deserve to be mentioned and recognized in this fifth anniversary. For sure, the creation of this uh, normative infrastructure that shows as this peace uh, standard conformed by the Commission for the Truth and the unit of search of people that are missing. This is a great work carried out to modify the constitution, to create the laws, to develop them through decrees. And all of this infrastructure is giving life today to three institutions that are quite important for the implementation of the agreement to uh, help and strengthen the implementation in the territories. And in this way of thinking, we also have here some milestones in regards to the implementation of those norms and infrastructure on one hand, the progress made on the legal side in the GAP or HEP as research groups we identified in the fifth report that the GAEP was moving towards macro cases um, cases at the same pace as other courts uh, in comparison that we carried out with other countries but we have said that uh, to take decisions soon they were going to be adopting uh, it was going to be faster than any other court within the experience that we know, thanks to the matrix of the peace agreement. This year, we had two main events precisely that are taking to port this JEP. On one hand, the the decision of uh, take to take the maximum responsible so far and the macro case that is being known as uh, hostages uh, retained that were retained and kidnapping and also to take to court uh, the ones that are responsible in regards to the army or to the public forces of uh, victims that we know as um, extrajudicial extrajudicial um, situation so this is something that where we need to see who are responsible we need to sanction through those sanctions of the JEP's jurisdiction, but also to take the change to start the process, the restorative process that was proposed by the agreement with the victims, and also the deployment of the truth um, and also the expansion of its mandate in regards to the constitutional court to be able to carry out this exercise uh, of listening, as was uh, 25,000. Uh, testimonies of the armed conflict and interviews is a huge exercise for a conflict of more than 50 years, such as the Colombian one, and also in regards to the search of missing people to adopt the national plan of search of missing people, regional plans uh, for the search of missing people to start working on this to reduce the problem, uh, the humanitarian problem of the armed um, conflict. And point six um, will be the, the we have three milestones here in regards to the objectives for the implementation verify and refrain the agreement and for sure stages where we are now on one hand to create the CSIP, which is the commission to follow and verify the implementation and to create also the international component of verification these situations according to the evidence that we have been able to identify and to collect in a comparative manner those are quite important instances to achieve generating spaces of listening dialogue among the different parties and this has been having ups and downs of course difficulties we, we have said this before at different uh, meetings but this is not uh, living aside that this is a situation that exists and we can use it as a mechanism of dialogue a mechanism of solution of conflicts or controversies and also for example to update the marco plan of the implementation to take to the territory those sessions to achieve those tax, uh, tasks at territorial level to create a special law for peace known as fast track where the congressmen and the executive branch are organizing their activities to obtain results that for some people could be poor or good but six, six bills and two statutory laws of quite importance for the peace agreement were uh, seen very shortly in the congress to be able to start this process of creating uh, this peace uh, and for lastly the design and the market implementation that translate the final agreement of a public policy and gives instruments for its orientation this would be the first 
panorama that we can share with you, Josefina, of what you can find in this document that we're presenting today. Thank you very much, Mateo. And well, Elise, I would like you to please share with us which have been the milestones, but not in the main content of the agreement, but in those differential focus in regards to gender and ethical focus that you had mentioned before. Yes, thinking on the first factor of the implementation, it's quite important first to say about the innovation that was to include those transversal focus in this agreement and every point of the agreement at comparative level. This was something quite innovative to include the ethical focus and gender focus in the agreement. In regards to the implementation, in regards to that the CV that was being mentioned by Mateo, they always credit this special instance for the follow-up and for gender focus and the other instance of high level of ethical groups. So these two instances should watch towards the implementation of the commitments with ethical and gender focus. During the past two years, they have been able to have financing and have more resources and more budget. And they have been able to act completely and their work uh, in regards to watch for the rights has been quite important for the implementation. Something else that was being mentioned by Mateo was the creation of the plans for the development of programs with territorial scope. As was being said before by Mateo, they were able to create more than 32 initiatives, 32,000 initiatives to be implemented in the communities in those PEDED regions. And it's quite important as well to say that from those 32,000 initiatives, more than 8,000 of those initiatives were included as ethnic or that means initiatives that should benefit the ethnical groups and also more than 4,000 of those initiatives had the label of gender. So that gives us a guideline for the implementation of those commitments and we hope with a gender focus and an ethical focus. And the third milestone that we want to share has to do with the creation of the institutional infrastructure for peace in many cases with an ethical focus and a gender focus. So maybe the, the most uh, relevant, relevant example has been the creation of groups, working groups and instances, uh, directives within the organizations of the true justice and repetition system. Within ASEP, there's a directive, the Truth Commission, there's a directive of ethical groups and our working group in regards to gender, the special jurisdiction for peace has an ethical commission and a gender commission. And the search unit has a directive of territorial groups with emphasis in collective territories. Also the same rule of these organizations of this instance is better has a gender focus and ethical focus. So it's quite important also to recognize this work carried out and this instances that have been able to include uh, this uh, focus. Okay, thank you very much, Elise. I also would like to ask, we have been talking about the milestones and those achievements of this five years, but also we have so many barriers in this in, in special report has highlighted the challenges. I think that it's quite important to recognize them, identify them, also to start somehow to to be able to choose and to be able to identify in a specific way, more clear way, which are those opportunities in regards to the following five years. So share with us, which have been those barriers that you have identified? Yes, as was being mentioned before by Mateo, identifying milestones and also progress made and also opportunities. We have tried to use the concept called cascade, cascade that are positive or cascades that are negative, which are 
commitments of the agreement that when they are implemented could take to the implementation of other type of provisions or other type of commitments of the agreement. If so, it, if it, implementation has a positive effect, this can have a cascade effect or positive effect in the implementation of their commitments or the other way around. If it's not implemented, then that could uh, take negative effects of this non-implementation of the agreement. So this was the starting point of our analysis for the opportunities. And the time that we have, I don't have time to highlight every opportunity. I'm just gonna be mentioning some of them. And in the report that it's written and it, it is in our website, you can read more details about the opportunities uh, point by point. So I'm gonna be trying to highlight some of the points and some of the opportunities which are positive cascades. The first one, which is, uh, just starting is the adequation of the formalization plan, massive formalization plan of rural property that should be the referent in regards to the implementation of the land fund, formalization of massive formalization of titles of land and other mechanisms of access to land. With the implementation of the formalization plan, we can also uh, start or continue implementing 14 other commitments of those commitments of the agreement. So we see very clearly how the formalization plan can be a reference. It can help us so much to be a guide to implement other provisions of the agreement. So another commitment that could be a positive cascade would be the implementation of the that initiatives at uh, territory level. We have talked before about the process in regards to the planning process that has been quite positive. And at the same time, it has been creating so many expectations. So to be able to, to reach these expectations, it's quite important to start or well, to continue implementing better these initiatives and also to assure ourselves that those are coordinated with other plans or other mechanisms of planning of the government, such as development plans at territorial level, or maybe the national plans that were mentioned before by Mateo, and also the implementation of those mechanisms will also have a positive effect in the implementation of those other commitments. And so point two, it's quite important to highlight that there should be a law in regards to the citizens' participation there are 10 commitments in the agreement in regards to the strengthening of social organizations, financing mechanisms for these organizations and so on that could start to be implemented together with the approval of a law in regards to this topic. The other commitment that will impact the implementation of four other commitments, additional commitments has to do with the the design and execution of a program of reconciliation, coexistence, and prevention of segmentization. The National Council for Peace and Reconciliation and Coexistence, also that was mentioned before, Mar Mateo presented some guidelines for this policy to the Ministry of the Interior, and it's under the process to be approved. So this policy will be quite important to be able to reach uh, many audiences with this message of reconciliation, of non-stigmatization through different programs of education and training, of course, and also the approval of this program would be quite important. And in point three, Mateo mentioned before several progress made in regards to the surrendering of weapons and also there are some other opportunities to continue implementing this part of the agreement. The first one has to do with the design and follow up of the public policy and in regards to the dismantling of criminal organizations. So this is a public policy that, that needs to be carried out by the National Commission of Security Guarantees, which is an entity of the government and of the civil society and with this, public policy, they could start implementing 11 other commitments that have to do with 
the dismantling of these criminal organizations that we all, as we all know, this is a very important commitment for security at territorial level. And another very important commitment for the security has to do with the development of the security interval system for the exercise of the policy or CSEP. This is a system that exists in paper and also there are several instances that have been activated for the implementation, but we have not seen like, like an implementation uh, robust enough of the capabilities of coordination of the instances and of CSEP and especially of higher level instances that should play this role, which is an instance that should play this role of coordination that is so important for such a complex task as it is to assure security for this uh, policy exercise. Point four, it's quite important as well to design and to start working with the national system of attention of uh, consumer of illicit drugs that should be created through, through several programs and plans that could support towards the treatment of consumers of illicit drugs. And of this commitment, we have five other commitments. Finally, point four, it's quite important to mention what has to do with the productive projects on the long term of the people that are now having illicit crops. So as was being mentioned before by Mateo, we have had a progress made in this program. There are not high rates of replanting of illicit seed crops within the beneficiaries of the program, but to assure the sustainability of the program, it's quite important to assure that the people have other economic alternatives through these productive projects on the long term. So and the other information that we have is that about 2% of those families registered in the program have access to those productive projects. So that means that we need to increase this percentage that will be important to be able to continue to dynamize the implementation of this program. Point five, in regard to victims of the conflict, as was being said before by Mateo, we hope that, that they're soon uh, presenting their resolution of conclusions in the peace court for the special jurisdiction of peace that can dynamize other commitments for the repair and truth for victims. And also point five, there is something that it's quite important among the collective repair and what is happening now in point one with the rural integral reform. Up till now, the collective repair has been implemented through the integral plans of collective repair, but also the there are initiatives that are the PEDET initiatives and other programs at national level that have the same focus that has to do with the repair. And also it's quite important and that can dynamize the implementation, the coordination among the, the collective repair and through the integral plans of repair and also the implementation of the initiatives that are called PEDETs. And finally, point six, Mateo also mentioned that through fast track, they were able to approve different rules and norms that are quite important, but also we need some more that are so important to be able to dynamize all their commitments. The important norms for point one have to do with the creation of the jurisdiction or agricultural specialty. And the other one has to do the law about differential treatment for uh, illicit drug crops, uh, farmers, and also to find other norms to dynamize the implementation. And also we have many norms in point two that are pending still to be implemented. And this includes as well, a reform to the electoral regime with special attention to the recommendations given by the electoral mission at that time. So in point six, 
we still have an opportunity here to have the approval of other norms to dynamize the implementation of other points of the agreement. So, well, I think that I'm going to stop here and uh, welcome for to read our report so you can see more details about these opportunities and other opportunities that we have mentioned there. Thank you very much, Elise. Thank you. We have the report in our website. You can download it and we encourage you all to read it and take the time to read it totally. But we have not ended yet. This presentation is not ended. And as you have said before, as we have talked before, we have the differential focus, not only of gender, but also ethnical that have some type of delay regarding the implementation level of other provisions. So I would like then Mateo to ask how we can improve these levels of implementation of the differentials focus. Thank you, Josefina. Yes, to answer this question, I would like then also to frame this uh, exercise of identification of challenges, opportunities regarding the implementation uh, for the following five years. The idea is to look retro retro respectively of this five years and what can we do during the following five years but also the following decade to achieve the objectives of the final agreement and here of course at least share this before we were able to identify not only these opportunities of the implementation to improve and increase implementation levels but also where are the bottlenecks that uh, where this infrastructure, all those capacities, capabilities that were installed with the creation of institutions, with the issue of norms, with the adoption of plans, have not started to be seen in the territories and to have positive effects in the community. So this is something we have seen before in the fifth report that we introduced in May, which is that there's effort made and there are exercises that are quite important in regard to capabilities, installation, the sign of public policies that are quite far of the territories, far from citizens, that at the end, those are the ones that are feeling the effect of peace building, benefiting their life conditions, their income, their, their environment. And also it's worth to say that this when we were able to identify where these bottlenecks are or where these cascades are better at the differential focus in regards to gender and ethnic ethnicity has a special repercussion. For example, the rural reform, integral rural reform has as an axis, the national plan and sectoral plan to be able to work and to design and to take uh, to the territories more progress, not only towards the expectations, but towards the realities of those communities that coexist in those territories. So one of the steps needed are the design of instruments that are sensitive to the needs of farmer women, of women that are Afro, indigenous, and of other ethnic communities in general. And here we, uh, this exercise, we're able to identify some um, gaps that are there and that we're warning that the implementation precisely should work towards filling those gaps and trying to fix this differential situations of the LGBTI communities and women communities, ethnical communities in those territories. So we think that the following years of the implementation should work precisely to fill those gaps and the idea is to take water, power, connectivity, education, health, food to those places. The only way they can achieve this effect is to make a consultation of the interest of those women, uh, those communities and to take them to a better situation of welfare that can translate towards the satisfaction of their rights and rights of these communities. I would say, just to summarize, summarize, the national plans should be articulated within the differential focus. This is key to have this infrastructure and this whole design of policies exercise, rigorous, technical, and then some opportunities 
well supported could have effect to change realities at territorial level. And number two would be something that was mentioned before by Elise has to do the replacement of illicit crops where we have the main uh, problems is not only in regards to social conflicts where we also have the armed illegal armed groups are there. We need to say this. This is something that has been documented in our reports. This is the main challenge that we have to achieve the implementation at territorial levels to generate guarantees for security. There are many opportunities in the implementation of point one. For example, as was said before by Elise, deploying the National Commission of Guarantees of Security on one hand, but specifically exerting the mandate that was given by the agreement ratified by the norms with the legal order in Colombia, which is to design and to have a follow-up of a public policy of dismantling of those criminal organizations and a concept of dismantling that goes beyond the military action and repressive action over this group, but especially to generate conditions to have the people working in those groups to have better opportunities and better offers on behalf of the government at territorial level than the opportunities that are being offered by those criminal gangs now within the ones that we can name so many uh, among them also some effects of the of the dissidences of the structures that are working with para, paramilitary groups and other guerrilla organizations that have not signed peace agreements and are not working towards peace building as FARC-EP did. And in this territory is a replacement of illicit crops. The replacement of illicit crops is quite important and also to work with differential focus. There are so many important instruments. This year we saw how the program was included for the gender protocol to be included and uh, the Penis follow-up. There's a debt pending in regards to replacement with ethnic focus, basically uh, because of limitations or bottlenecks within the process called previous consultation with ethnic groups that requires precisely to make progress towards building this consensus, but also to materialize this scope in regards to replacement of illegal crops and trying to see this with the eyes of the farmer women, peasant women and ethnic groups women. Thank you very much, Mateo. Okay, I'm not going to be abusive of your time, but I would like to start not only presenting what the report is showing, but let's go now to the second segment of this event that has to do with uh, be more attentive to the questions being asked. We have received so many questions on behalf of our public. We give thanks because from our registration, we have received so many questions. So I would like to answer some of the questions that were received before, and then we will answer the ones that we have here in the QA icon of the chat. So we have a first question about which aspect in regards to the commitments regarding justicial transitional justice were not implemented and how the repair of victims has been seen. So I will continue with you, Mateo. What can you say about this question being asked? Okay, Josefina, let's say that in regards to repair to victims of the armed conflict where we have been able to identify that there are challenges, yes. Um, let's say on one hand, there are concrete measures to repair victims. And also we have highlighted the re collective repair, collective repair of communities, but also this aspect has a lot of importance when we see that the agreement, this is a message that we always repeat and send, and the agreement is integral. The points of the agreement, the objectives are interconnected. If the collective repair, for example, and the national plan of repair, collective repair is a commitment of point five of the agreement, it has to do with point one in regards to rural integral reform, because precisely the agreement tries to connect this vision uh, of transforming the, the countryside, the rural side, and to give back the conditions of life 
to those individuals and to satisfy their needs and to repair victims through exercises that should transform their lives that can help them go back to the country, to the rural, to give them back their dignity. And therefore the re collective repair plans need to be connected directly with the rural development plans. There's an exercise to align through the roadmaps, through different instruments that should be seen. It is urgent to be able to answer, give answers to victims through the implementation, but also it is connected with the measures taken in point three that it have to do with recorporation to the civil society. And this process has to do with recorporation to civil society where these people somehow to get reincorporated to civil society, political life and of the countries precisely working with the victims, helping the victims through the compliance of the sanctions that have to do with integral system of peace that should produce effects of this process to repair and to transform people at territorial level after the uh, adjudication of responsibilities after the court that has to do this uh, peace jurisdiction for peace. So we have here so many challenges that are being framed precisely to achieve the integrality of measures. So the victims uh, along the conflict of more than 50 years can find in rural development, they can find uh, social economic guarantees, the satisfaction of their needs, and the, the way to repair them as victims of the armed conflict. Okay, great. Elise, we have another question that has been received here. Where are the main difficulties for the implementation with higher rhythm and quality? Okay, so I think that one of the main challenges, uh, as was mentioned before by Mateo, and that were mentioned by many of our participants, has to do with the violence still persisting in the country. This obviously difficult the progress made in the implementation in every level and in many of the projects in regards to point one and also point four that has to do with replacement of illicit crops. So we see this uh, phenomena such as forced displacement of individuals, the ethnic communities, confinement, the increase of accidents with landmines, uh, confrontation between criminal gangs, and obviously the tragedy of, of killing leaders, uh, human rights defenders, and former combatants. This is creating a uh, environment of fear and lack of trust, which is quite difficult to overcome. And that's why citizens want to see this, uh, have this sense of belonging. And of course, they need to have this security. This is a huge challenge, I would say, for the implementation of the final agreement. And something else, another challenge has to do with limitations in regard to financial resources, technical resources for the implementation of the agreement that at the end wants to transform the causes of the conflict, processes such as the multi-purpose cadaster, the implementation of the PEDETs, national plans. And this does require high levels of budget and technical capacities at every level. This is a huge challenge that we have when we mention several of those positive cascades that we suggested in the report. Okay, great, thank you very much. And we also have here in the chat, in our QA icon, another question. And we have received many questions here and comments from our audience in regards to the situation of security of leaders, of defenders of human rights and former combatants. I would like to ask Mateo about this. Where and why is this happening? Which is the institutional problem to defend former combatants and social leaders? Okay, I'm gonna give an answer from the agreement that one we investigate and we follow and then we can also give an answer from what we see in our monitoring activity because i think it's quite important for our public 
to have this view because these outcomes that we have shared today are coming from the follow-up exercise that we carry out to 578 provisions or commitments that the agreement includes that every month from its narrative we see if they were carried out or not if actions were carried out or not to comply with them and a little bit more the investigative or research activity that shows us the results that we're presenting today in regards to security guarantees for leaders and defenders of human rights there are several commitments that the agreement includes i would like to focus myself on one hand on the polit policies to recognize uh, the labor of, or task of human defenders and as part of the political transformation of the country point two of the final agreement includes several provisions or commitments to raise this human rights organization social organizations to raise their status in the public debate and here we have a challenge at normative level where through the through the assignment of this status or appointment of this status shoe with the mechanisms to strengthen them on the organizations it, we want to raise precisely their level and role within the society their role within the public debate and on, their, on the other hand we have some other commitments in regards to security and we do have within this framework of the integral system for participation in polit political activities. We have other commitments there, but especially what is well being known as the collective protection. And in Colombia, we have it as Project 660, and we mentioned this and also the progress made here. And here, within this monitoring activity that we have carried out we have been able to see that there are some difficulties for its financing several difficulties to achieve this vision of collective protection beyond the material measures of protection that means of giving just some means as for example uh, harm more cars vest or panic buttons and so on and other measures that are not only material devices but when we see precisely uh, philosophy, if you can allow me to say this, of this collective protection, what can we do to have these rural communities at risk to be able to uh, not be affected by those risks? And how can we help them? And, and here, there's a challenge that is quite important within what we have seen, uh, which is that the program for the protection, uh, collective protection programs have a very important challenge and I would like to insist again, this is the third time that I mentioned this, the policy that has to do with the dismantling of criminal organizations that is included in the agreement, where basically there's a commission for this, that it's conformed, that has been meeting together, uh, but it's not complying with its task to dismantle these organizations that could help the action of the state in this regards. Thank you very much, Mateo. I have received other questions I would like to combine and to ask Elise. The first one is, because I think that these questions can be combined, and what monitoring system of the agreement is open for consultation of the civil society where we can see the goals, the progress made, and the responsible ones? To have this type of system was a commitment. Who is doing this? Where can we find it? And I would like to ask you this question precisely with another question, which have been the sources where the information has been taken and where the numbers have been taken? How is the civil society is helping you with the monitoring activity? Yes. First of all, I'm going to be talking about the sources that we have used precisely. And then I will be talking about the other sources that are being used. And as as was being said, as, as it was asked, the commitment and the agreement was to have a public system to show the peace agreement progress. And there are several systems uh, by the civil society, but also from the government, there's an integral system for information for the company, which is the system 
of the National Department of Planning, that is DANE, which is reporting about every indicator that was created and that's a CV. So this is a very important source that we have used. And it's quite important also to mention, let me check that I have the name correctly. I have the correct name here. The accountability system towards the building of an open government in regards to the public function. This is another mechanism where the entities need to report about the implementation of the peace agreement. So now another commitment that it's still pending in regards to this system has to do with the dissemination at territorial level of the results of the implementation through public hearings, uh, communication media, broadcasting uh, stations and so on. So we see the systems at national level and it's pending, still pending in regards to the pedagogy the, and the accountability at uh, territorial level. In regards to our information sources, from the beginning of the implementation up till date, we have been able to go and check more than 10,000 documents. We had made interviews and more than 5,000 sources. So our sources are from the government, yes, they were at public information, but we also have carried out many interviews. We have talked with many leaders through focal groups through other type of events. So then we, as was being said before by Josefina, our goal is to be able to contrast and to look for the information that can be measurable about the implementation of the peace agreement through the sources that are so important. So this is a work that we couldn't do without the support of so many organizations, so many people that also are working in this process regarding the implementation of the peace agreement. Thank you very much, Elise. Oh, well, I will have another question here that I hope that Mateo can answer. With the change of scope of USA in regards to the fight against drugs, where reforestation and protection of social leaders is a condition to continue supporting this process in Colombia. What opportunities does the agreement have in regards to eradication of crops, not to see this only regarding eradication and to avoid violence against farmers that are trying to eradicate illicit crops? Okay, Josefina, I think I will try to go deeper because this answer starts from, as Elisa mentioned before, because at the end, we have two sides. From the standpoint of uh, what to do, let's say, the agreement foresees a long-term scope facing the replacement of crops, that it's uh, precisely supported to achieve that those productive projects through which we can offer opportunities to the uh, people that have signed the agreements regarding replacement of crops can work with this long-term exercise. And at the end, the eradication of plants, of coke plants can be replaced by some other crops that at the end, that are illegal, at the same time could be profitable, that can generate a better income, that can generate profits, revenues that can allow people to have a better welfare and better life for farmers and peasants that are eradicating those crops. This happened precisely not only uh, in regards to this attention that should be given to them, but also a support, constant support on the long term. First, to guarantee that these uh, crops should produce, but at the same time, to be able to take them to the market, to take those crops to the market and to be able to enter the supply chain. And this has been a diagnose. Here we have the main gaps to achieve this, people to take their products to the market. So the sustainable scope and the support given, technical support given to this path farmers that can work on this on the long term. And here is where we have the main bottleneck. The numbers show this precisely. The numbers presented by the government office show that the investment is not above 5%. And here we see precisely 
that we have a gap, very important gap. And that at the end, it's not allowing to go deeper with the implementation in this long-term scope, the sustainable scope the agreement in regards to replacement of illegal crops. Okay, I see here another question why related with this topic of land, but not with the process that have to do with replacement of illegal crops, but the solution to legality of land. And it says, what path can we find to achieve very soon to solve this problem that has to do with land titles? Because for the progress made for farmers, they need to have titles and that's their right. Yes, precise. You're asking me, I think you're asking me, yeah. Well, the agreement proposes and was developing precisely a norm towards having titles with a very important uh, goal, 7 million hectares of land that should have a title, which at the end has been having um, let's say many challenges, quite important challenges and barriers, but specifically because of something that we have seen also, and Elise shared about this when we, she was talking about opportunities, but the scope of the agreement, it's an integral scope. And one of, of this, one of the national plans of rural integral reform has to do with the national plan of formalization of rural territories. And this is a plan that it's still uh, making progress. It's still an ongoing uh, plan. And, and at the end, it has been moving, yes, but we are seeing that it's needed. It's quite important to have this, to have this goal of 7 million of hectares being, having a title. This can be taken to a plan that can achieve precisely to be, com to comply with the objectives on the term uh, established. And so the main opportunity here, according to what we have seen, has to do with the adoption of the formalization plan and to work with what includes the agreement and to achieve this main goal of 7 million of hectares with a title as the development of uh, the agreement. Thank you very much, Mateo. I would like to give the floor now to Elise because we have talked before you were sharing about this gap, about the differential scopes. And we also have here a question that is being asked that allows us to think of which are the implications of the gap, which are the implications of the gap regarding the gender focused implementation and the other points of the agreement. Okay, well, at a very general level, I think that one of the goals of the agreement was to transform the conditions that caused the conflict. So this transformation of inequalities, transformation of relationships between the rural and urban sides, the transformation of the productive and the remaining parts of the country are quite important. But if the implementation of the general Without the implementation of gender form, we cannot see this transformation to have a more equal society. I can give you an example of what has been mentioned before by Mateo about the land tenure and land titles. We can offer credits to buy a land and without gender focus, but if we do this, we wouldn't have a change regard to who are the owners of the land in Colombia. So what we could see here is without the implementation of the gender focus and also with the ethical focus, without this implementation, we will continue with the same inequities and inequalities in the country on one hand. On the other hand, I would say that the implementation of gender focus, I'm adding this, um, the ethical focus again, within the participative processes of the agreement are quite important towards the creation of PEDAD initiatives, but also towards the recently created um, peace, subscription of peace, excuse me, um, in regards to the training of political rights and also the sentences of 
the special jurisdiction for peace, it's quite important to have this focus to assure precisely the to assure precisely that the ethnical groups and women and LGBTI communities can be seen in this process and well that they should have this sense of belonging of the process. So I think these are two situations, the transforming effect and the sense of belonging are two clear things that are not happening without the implementation of this cutting cross uh, focus or cut, cut excuse me, cross cutting focus. Thank you. I think it's almost time to conclude our event. I do have here two more questions to ask. One is precisely about the 16 series conscriptions for peace. And what this question is asking is precisely uh, putting together the topic has to do with security, with the topic has to do with special conscriptions, the security topics in point two. Mateo, would you allow me? How can we increase? The security guarantees at rural areas of those 16 PCR conscriptions with the electoral process. I'm also encouraging to share with us which should be those priorities that we should keep in mind to be able to implement this circumscriptions now during the following months. Okay, well, I think that the question or my answer better to the question will focus in two or three sides. First, the context of the implementation of the circumscriptions. As many of you know, it's worth to mention that the special peace circumscription is a measure foreseen in the agreement that was not materialized four years ago through a law regarding the reform of the constitution because of other aspects and the ones that were debating, debating this. But anyway, it's not worthy to mention this here, but this was taken to the Constitutional Court and the Constitutional Court about three months ago, two months ago, maybe, took the decision of give life to this special peace circumscriptions. And with this, it was activating a cascade of implementations because from this decision occurring in the special circumscriptions, we had 11 other provisions of the final agreement. And so therefore to have this carried out at a time near elections, as you know, elections to the Congress are next March of year 2022. And so this has been a provision that has been implemented, let's say at a scenario a little bit confusing because of the time frame, because of the budget, and also, and it has made that the observation that we have of it is needing to be very tuned up. That would be my first comment, as you know, this is a quite important provision for the implementation of the agreement, but this is a temporal context and budget context very specific. The second part of my answer would be, of uh, which are those conditions that the victims should have to present themselves to this special peace circumscription, or what is the agreement foreseen? Those are material provisions of participation that the victims of the armed conflict not only from the formal standpoint could be part of a list to be selected, but also to be included or to participate in this uh, legislative elect, um, as members of the Congress, but also that they can also have a campaign in an qualitative manner and to recognize the difficulties of those 16 uh, regions or territories where those people are that at the end, the security is the first barrier. Why? Because it's there precisely where we continue seeing the effects of the armed uh, situation or of those criminal organizations. We have paramilitary members working there. We have dissidents of FARC-AP there that at the end are a factor that are putting at risk these communities. But there are some social things that we need to keep in mind and political uh, situations that we need to keep in mind. High levels of stigmatization uh, regarding human rights organizations where many of these victims work together or get together. And so the security guarantees are not only material, but are also guarantees on the political side. The recognition of victims 
in regards to the work they carry out and to reduce uh, their risk. And this also assumes to reduce this risk. There's a commitment of the agreement that was precisely uh, going to be used towards making an impact of this risk phenomenon in regards to security on the election, which is a national covenant to uh, take weapons away and violence away of politics of Colombia. This covenant has not been carried out yet. It's a commitment that it's pending, but this is a commitment that requires of a level of convincing, very high uh, of every political sphere, social sphere of the country that the weapons and that violence should be taken out. Could it be a factor uh, in regards to ele elections in elections? So we are close to this situation where risk is still there and we are highlighting this situation. Yes, thank you very much, Mateo. I have another question here in regards to territories. I would like to ask Elise, you know, so this allows us to close a little bit this conversation because we're now trying to see clues about where we're heading towards the future of course in Barometro. And it's a good afternoon. How can we strengthen partnerships at territorial level to make progress in regards to dissemination of information related with the compliance of the implementation of the peace agreements? Yes, I think that there are some mechanisms there that are quite important that we could mention or we could use for this uh, partnerships to share information. We can mention the peace councils of coexistence at territorial level that sure work at different levels and different areas, but they do have a very important role in this process. We also can mention on the different territorial councils of incorporation and coexistence that could be used also for a, one part of the agreement to try to give this type of at local level. There are some commitments in the agreement that was mentioned before about public hearings, local mechanisms to share information, and also the CCB, uh, which also has a commitment the agreement to make hearings at uh, territorial level. And so we have several mechanisms that we can use in this regards. And also we, as project, we are in this process of starting monitoring in a very more specific manner at territorial level through uh, a regional barometer. We hope we can leverage this effort made at territorial level to be able to measure uh, in a more different manner at territorial level in regards to implementation, because we know that in such a huge country, such a diverse country with so many different scenarios, it's quite important to carry out this analysis at local level. Thank you very much, Elise. Okay, every time I want to close, there's another question being asked, but anyway, I have here a question that can help us to make more clarity. Elise, you talked about the territories, decentralization of the implementation. What do we think here in the barometer, the matrix of the peace agreement, the process? And we have another question that I think that can help us to gain some clarity about our mandate. And it's saying, it is clear that the matrix focus, it's more oriented towards the measurement of the progress made. And it seems that it's not having a concern of the stakeholders that are behind or are impeding the implementation of the agreements. Is there a study in CROG that can include the political stakeholders that are involved and this tension that it's avoiding the process to make progress. In other words, is there a critical study of how peace has been broken? Mateo, Mateo, can you tell us what could you answer to this question? I think that it is important first that this idea, it's quite important, the methodological reflection, it's quite important to recognize which are the limitations that our methodology of the monitoring activity has, and which are the benefits and the opportunities this methodology offers uh, for an objective that initiative 
uh, in order to see to to improve the implementation levels of the agreement that they are sustained in evidence that the matrix of the peace agreement has been collecting that basically takes us to this conclusion that a higher levels of implementation of the peace agreements we have lower probabilities of going back to the armed conflict and under this premise let's say this matrix this methodology and the research actually carried out by Kroc institute in colombia has been deployed precisely to be able to give incentives to the stakeholders of the implementation to increase their level of implementation independently of the political controversies that are normal and here we have the space to have them the space is there to have it, a political space, academic space to have it, by the way, we and the methodology being used and developed by Kroc Institute triggers towards answering this question of how to improve and increase the levels of implementation to reduce probabilities of going back to the armed conflict. So under this premise, our methodology is sustained. And question is the one being asked, Josefina, precisely, it's lacking of a, an answer. And it has no answer in our methodological concept, but of course, recognizing that those are very valuable questions that are helping the debate. But let's say that from this side of our methodology, I would say that what we want to do is to observe the commitments, to observe the evidence, and to be able to determine, starting from this evidence, if the commitments are being com com complied with or not, if are being carried out or not. This is like an explanation that it seems timely to mention, to be able to put into context this study, because at the end, there are some scopes, of course, that are quite interesting from other sectors, from other sectors of the civil society, from political sectors, yes, but the methodology that we're using in Kroc Institute is more focused towards checking this commitment of increasing the implementation um, levels. Thank you very much. I would like to give thanks, especially to Elise. I want to give thanks to Mateo for your time, for being our um, speakers today that have allowed us to present this special report. I would like to highlight as director of the peace agreement matrix that for us precisely, the peace agreement is a platform that allows to have the social conflict, political conflict, we can start treating them in a different manner so we do not go back to violence or conflict. So the peace agreement precisely is the base that can allow us to build peace that will allow us as well to reconcile, to go back to see ourselves in our eyes, that to feel that we all make part of a political community in this political community, it's plural, it's democratic, and at the same time we have different opinions, we have different perceptions. So we see that in the first five years, we have made a lot of progress in a process and in a road that is quite important in regards to the implementation of the peace agreement. We think as well that the following five years, we think that the special report would be an input, quite strategic input for the following five years, not to lose sight of the different provisions and commitments that have not yet been implemented that are still uh, blocking some other provisions to build peace that we can strengthen, that we can go deeper and expand as well. This dynamics of positive change that we have seen and at the same time that we can have this possibility as well of being able to work during the following five years with a process on the medium term, long term, then can allow us to build a sustainable peace and long lasting peace. And this is clear our hope and our challenge. I want to give thanks again for your time, for being with us here today during this almost uh, one hour and a half. The report, as was being said before, you can find it in our website. Please go to our website, download the report, read it, talk about it, discuss about it. Please write down to us, give us your feedback and let us know if this report is being useful and it's a benefit for everyone in Colombia and in the international community. Okay, again, with these words, I want to say goodbye. I want to give thanks for your participation here in this seminar. Thank you very much. And 
good evening.